Today, I'm going to teach you how to beat a mill deck in Gwent every single time. That's right, every single time. This video is going to be designed in such a way that it always applies. Right now, what we're in, like a little over halfway through 2021, you might be from the future, 2022, 2023, etc., etc. This video is designed to transcend time. Applies to every meta. We're not going to focus on the numbers of the cards, but rather like provisions of power. We're going to be focusing on the theory behind the mill and how to always dismantle it. Cool. If you watch this in the future meta and some cards seem different, don't worry about it. This video is still going to be very, very relevant. Excellent. Let's get on to business. Mill is one of the most hated archetypes in all of Gwent. And to be blunt, that's never going to change. It gets a ton of angry posts on Reddit. People hate this deck. And ironically, players who know the game very well love this deck. Not necessarily play it, though plenty of them do, but to be matched up against it because it's viewed as a free win, baby. Give me that free win. Mill is viewed as free and it deserves that title. To be blunt, it's not a very strong deck at all. Unless God comes down and sits behind the keyboard and starts playing, Mill is pretty much guaranteed to lose every single game. Let's talk about what Mill is and then why it's so bad. Mill is an archetype, a deck type that Nilfgaard has. It can be other ones, but really just Nilfgaard. That's trying to remove your opponent's deck from the game. It is one of the rare decks in this game that isn't trying just to win every round on points. What it's going to do is try to win round one, mill them, which is a term for removing cards from your opponent's deck, mill them in round two, and in round three, if your opponent has no cards, they can't draw anything, but you still get to draw. All of a sudden, your opponent is minus three in card advantage. If I draw three cards from my deck and you get none from yours, I'm probably going to win the game, even if my cards are crap. So let's go ahead and just bring up the most emblematic card right now in the game for Mill. Kingslayer. Four for six. Again, don't focus too much on numbers. We're going to talk a little bit about the theory behind the numbers, though. But it basically, look, deploy, reveal the top card of your opponent's deck, and banish it. What a weird card. It is, its stats are terrible, right? It's a four for six. And right now, at four, I can get a four for seven, or a four for seven, or seven for four, blah, 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 blah. I can get seven points for four provision very easily. It's significantly less points and it's significantly more expensive, but it removes the top card of your opponent's deck. So I can play King Slayer and snipe my opponent's win condition with it. Let's talk about why Mill is so worried about round one and the why round two is so important. Round one is really important for Mill to win because round two is where they want to be doing the milling. If this deck is able to get to round two, I can play lower point cards and strip my opponent's deck out of everything. But to get to round two and play into it, I need to win round one. Mill decks are not going to be very attached to their leader ability. Leader ability is just going to be there to help them win in round one. They also have the advantage of tearing apart your opponent's strategy. If I'm playing, a, let's say I'm fighting against a mill deck and I'm playing a siege deck, go ahead and bring up siege. It's a scenario 14 provision. That's a lot of provision, at least of posting this video. If they play a Kingslayer and it removes my siege from the deck, all of a sudden all my pre planning is gone, right? To even play siege, I wanted to have to, I have to run a bunch of siege engines. My whole strategy in round three might be built around this card. And they play a Kingslayer, they snipe it, and all of a sudden my round three strategy is gone. When you're playing against mill though, Rules are out the window. Like, you just take your deck strategy and chuck it. Gone. Here's how you win. Let's go back to that uh, mill list. As I pointed out earlier, the Kingslayers are terrible in terms of points relative to provision. That's because CDPR, even for the best mill cards, puts a high price when it comes to provision cost in turn and for the ability to mill your opponent's deck. Let's compare one of the best mill cards in the game as of right now. Bilgoforts. It's a 5 for 9 that kills your opponent's unit. And then they summon another one from their deck. Points, that adds in a lot of variations, right? You might actually kill an 8 point and out might come a great sword at 10 points. Or you might get really lucky, you kill something really strong and then you snipe a key card from your opponent's deck. A lot of randomness here, not very reliable. Good card though. But for the same provision cost, I can get Yennefer's Invocation. I just take my opponent's unit and put it on top of my deck. So you played something really good, great. You're a really good thing, my really good thing. Excellent. Sharing is caring after all. Both are 9. This card, Yennefer's Invocation, sees endless amounts of play because it's very reliable, lets you steal great cards. Vilgoforts, you see fringe play here, there. Okay. So, let's break it down. When you play Mill, 
This is the beginner strategy. This is the easiest way to win every game. And if you just watch this portion of the video and then you skip the end where I talk about things like advanced and difficult tactics, you're still going to win pretty much 99% of your games. Step one against mill. Win round one. I do not care what you have to spend. If your opponent plays a mill card and you smack down scenario that you're saving for round three from your hand, that's a good move. <clears throat> you just need to win round one. Because if I win round one, I, I get to choose whether we play round two or round three. Simple as that. My, I know my opponent's going to mill me. So I need, whatever round I choose to play, I need to be very confident that I'm going to win. So at the end of round one, say I play out our cards. You know, we're going at it. I win. I can either dry pass round two, which is really an okay thing to do if you have cards left in your deck. If your opponent didn't do really much milling in round one, they had trouble, maybe they missed some stuff. You have a lot of cards left in, in your deck. Great. Pass. Go to round three. Your mill typically doesn't have room for engines. A long round three is probably in your favor. Significantly. Even if you're a control deck, just you can set up your win cons. And you have more time to get golds from your deck before they mill them out. Just show, you know, keep mulliganing bronzes back, get a handful of golds, clap them in round three. If your opponent milled you a lot in round one, great, 2-0 them. This is really easy to do on red coin, a little tougher to do on blue coin, because blue has to go play first. If they won, even if they played first, they're down a card in round two. But it's still very doable. Mill struggles with points. So just destroy them in round two. No, there is no turning back. If you choose to go for round two or round three, you get what you get. If you missed a card, let's say they milled you just enough to deny you one card advantage in round three, that sucks. And no, remember, if you pass round two, dry pass, pay no cards, just pass, they're going to probably play a card that mills. So make sure you're factoring that in when you're counting your deck out. If you go for round two and you lose it, your deck, I mean, they're going to still be milling you while they're trying to play out their cards. You probably won't have a deck to rely on. If you lose round two, you lose the game. But their cards, to be blunt, they suck. Mill cards are not very point heavy. They're not very utility based. They're typically just weak. They're weak cards that have one very narrow game plan to execute on. Abuse that. Throw out your plans. Don't get too attached to them. Just clap them. And I can see the chat. Actually, I forgot to hide it. Whoops. Well, got a new family member. Welcome. Let's go ahead and move on to a bit more. Let me double check. Got the beginner's tactics. Uh, yeah, one other quick note. Never go attached to your leader ability. You can use it round one. Expect the mill player to use their leader ability round one because they really need to win it. Make sure to use yours as well. Don't grow attached to it. They don't have any points. You don't need to save it. Just smack that leader ability down. Crush the mill opponent in round one and then do a long round three or a round two and just destroy their hopes and dreams. That's how you beat mill. You must win round one. Don't be attached to your scenarios. Don't get attached to your leader ability. Just win it. Easy as that. The reason people struggle against mill decks is they're too attached to that standard gameplay. The I must save my leader ability for round three. The my bomb, my bomb scenario card or my key card that must be, you know, generates me a lot of points must be played in round three. Don't grow attached to it. Mill doesn't have any points. Just crush them. Make sure, though, the only way you're going to be able to get to a round where you can beat them, though, is winning in round one and not letting them mill out your deck. They're going to mill during round one, but if you don't give them round two to mill you, they're not going to have enough time to finish you off. Unless you're playing a hyper thin deck where you're trying to mill your own self out to thin out your cards as quickly as possible, then you're pretty screwed. And we'll talk about that. Let's move on to the advanced tactics. Advanced tactics. That's right. There are two advanced tactics when beating mill. This is going to get more specific at this point. If you said, I'm content with the beginner, you can, you can leave. Click a like and click that sub button for more content. But if you want more advanced tactics or more tactics, let's talk about the advanced thing. Advanced tactic number one, the power pass. So some mill players have no idea how to actually play mill. And they're like, I found this deck online and I'm going to win. And they'll grab this list right here or whatever list it is. And they'll be eating out their cards. They'll be like, I played a Kingslayer for four points. And then I teleported it to mill you again, even though it doesn't give me any points. And halfway through round one, you're going to start to see a moment around four to five cards in your hand where they are so far behind on points. There is 0% chance. It might even be, maybe don't worry about the cards in your hands. They're just going to look and see their points. And you're going to say, wow, you are so far behind on points that if I pass, it is not possible with your leader ability, assuming they still have it, and any card in the game to catch up to me in points. 
Meaning you can win the round if I pass, but you're going to go minus two. You're going to be down a card to do it. Sometimes if they haven't milled much, they're not, they're really far behind on points. You did a good job. You played your scenario first and you have a ton of points and you have engines ticking. Just pass. At this point, force them to go minus two, ideally playing one or two good cards to make that possible. If they do, if they go minus two, their next step in their plan is going to be to try to win round two or not win round two, but bleed into round two. And then you can repeat the same thing. They're going to mill you in round two, make up a big point lead. They have to pass, you pass. By the time you're done, you're going to actually have a ton of potential card advantage. So even if you probably plus two at this point, two additional cards in your hand, maybe up to three, like you have a ton of card advantage is basically the point. If you're able to win round one of positive card advantage because your opponent was playing too few points, you can end up in round three. Even if you miss a draw, you have bonus carryover anyways. Win round one of card advantage, win round two, keeping the card advantage, and round three, hey, all of a sudden you might actually have more cards in your hand than the mill player. Just because your opponent played so passively in round one, not valuing winning that because they just queued up mill for the first time because they thought it was fun, you just get, oh, you know what? I'm up 25 points. I pass. You can, you know, your leader ability plus the best card in your deck is probably 20. I'll take two cards from you that are probably pretty good and your leader ability. Maybe I'll save my leader ability. And I have a huge advantage when you go to bleed me in round two. Uh, bleed out my deck. I'm just going to make sure I'm ahead on points the whole way through until you get to the last card in your hand. And you say, wow, I'm in trouble. I can't play this and it won't be enough to catch up with you. And all of a sudden, you have card advantage, and you just destroy them. There's a good number of mill decks I've passed against that have just forfeited as soon as they passed in round one. I would lose round one, but the sheer quantity of cards they had to commit to try to catch up and win it is just going to cost them the game. Or they have to pass as well. I'm going to buy a ton of points, and they pass. Great. Long round three. Even if I had to spend a couple of good gold cards in round one, my cards are just going to be better in round three if we're on 10 cards apiece, nine cards apiece, basically on even footing. That's strategy one, where I get so many points in round one because I know I need to win it. My opponent's playing very passively. I just take card advantage going plus two, plus three, but passing on them. Simple as that. Can be a little trickier. Some middle decks, you might get caught off guard. You really need to know their list because if they're able to close it in one, like, no. They smack down out of nowhere Bilga Forts and it blows up your 25-point card and you get an Emissary, a one-point card off the top. Ugh! All of a sudden, you've lost just a my minus one, which is normal. And then they bleed you out round two, milling your deck, and you lose the game. Got to really know your opponent's deck. You got to know how mill works. But passing in round one is acceptable if you get enough points ahead. But be careful. They will commit leader ability. They'll commit any gold it takes to try to catch up. So be careful of that. That's advanced tactic one. Advanced tactic number two only applies to one faction, which is also Nilfgaard. It's called the flip the script, baby. Flipping the script. Have you seen this card? Duchess Informant. I imagine, I fast forward two years, still relevant. 1.5 disloyal spawn and play a base copy of a non-disloyal enemy bronze unit. Just steals an opponent's unit. Mill decks have to spend a lot of stuff on garbage like Kingslayer. There's not that many mill effects in the game as of now. You can't get 25 mill effects. So in addition to that, they run a lot of stuff like thinning. Thinning related. Like right now, Dead Man's Tongue. It's popular. It moves two cards from your deck. Another card that's really popular, like a Fawn, Mage Assassins come out of this deck. Mill decks like deck thinning because it lets them get to their milling cards. There aren't a ton of them as of now, so they spend deck thinning. They, you know, they're going to be flying through their deck as well. So what you can do is you can flip the script by starting to copy their Kingslayers over and over if you're Nilfgaard and trying to mill them out first. If you go down this route, you have to be co very confident you can copy a lot of their cards and you have to be seeing a lot of deck thinning from them. And if you go down this path, it is a dumpster fire of round one. Both players' decks are going to get obliterated. You need a lot of copy effects. You definitely need Duchess in formats or other stuff that copies bronze units that your opponent has. And you can go wild. A lot of times, a deck with enough copy effects can just simply mill out the milling deck because mill decks have a lot of thinning involved because they're trying to get to their good mill cards. There aren't that many. So punish them. Now, in two years, maybe there's enough to actually have a 25 card list that's halfway decent that doesn't involve deck thinning. I doubt that, though. CDPR has made it pretty clear by looking at something like Kingslayer and the other cards like Vilgoforts at the beginning that two pay provision for deck thinning is a high cost and that they really don't want to add a ton, a ton of cards in the game. This is a reasonably recent addition, but most expansions come by with zero relevant cards for Mill. 
So I imagine deck planning will still be a part in the future for mill, especially as the game gets power craft and even some mill cards just aren't playable. Then you know what? I imagine deck thinning, trying to get to your best stuff will continue to always be relevant for a mill deck and flipping the script as a Nilfgaard deck will continue to be a relevant strategy. This one might age poorly, but I have a feeling it's good. Now let's discuss the final thing I want to discuss, which is what I call the difficult choice. You have to really know your deck well to know when it's time to abandon deck thinning. So one of like, let's look at a card like hunting pack real fast. If I realize it's mill, Hunting pack, when I play it, it thins out my deck. I take a card out of my deck and play it. The idea being later on, I'll draw more golds. This can, is a really good card, right? I get, I, get, I get to take a bronze out of my deck, more likely for golds, a lot of points. But if I'm thinning out my deck and my opponent is milling my deck, we're both doing the same thing, I'm going to run out of cards. One of the difficult things, and I'll just take practice, is knowing when you want to not trigger these cards. Instead, mulliganing them away or playing them when they can't be activated. Funding back, if enemy unit has statuses, summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row, there may be situations where you try to play it before they have any statuses. Right? They play Kingslayer, I might say, oh god, I don't want to thin out, I don't want to take the other hunting pack from my deck because it'll make my deck even smaller. I'm going to play it before I apply any statuses to my opponent's unit. Cool. That's tougher. You're giving up points in round one, typically, to do that. But if you can win round one anyways and keep your, more of your deck functional, you might have cards to draw in round three. It might only be a four-point card, but a four-point card can go a long way. You don't need a lot of points to beat Mill. They don't have a lot of points to begin with. Sometimes you have to play cards in suboptimal ways to beat Mill. A great example also is Sunset Wanderer. This card can come out for free and draw you a card. Since your deck one, and it can be six, seven, eight, nine, 13, 14, 15 points. It can be a big boy. But some players are very smart, and they say, instead of triggering it, I'm just going to play it. I don't want to draw the card. I don't need to. I can play it as a seven point card and I know Mill is going to struggle because seven points is really very small for most decks. It's a lot of points for Mill to overcome. This is difficult. There's no perfect line. I would say the more deck thinning you need to commit to win round one, the more likely you should be expecting that you have to win round two in a quick 2-0 fashion. If you're on blue coin, it gets a little riskier because you're going to be minus one when you go into that round two. If you win on red coin on even, which is the ideal way, deal coin, ideal way to win, you have the exact same amount of cards as your opponent. Just smoke them. Just literally take them over to the barbecue and smoke them. Excellent. So let's just do a quick summary because that's all the stuff. For a beginner, how I, every, every player who's played a lot of Gwent wins the game, we're all aware our uh, wins against mill. We're all aware that mill doesn't really have any points to pay to access milling effects. They have to play suboptimal cards at low point values and give up a lot of utility. In return for that, they can mill my deck, but I know they're going to struggle in round one. We also, us good, better players out there, are not attached to our leader ability or even maybe our game plan in round one. We know they're going to interfere with our deck. I can't stop them from milling my scenario, but I can win round one. I can use my leader ability in uh, round one as opposed to round three and clap them, giving me control over whether I need to 2-0 them, which is doable because they don't really have any points in their deck, or if I have enough cards left in my deck, go for a long round three and crush them there. Easy as that. Don't overthink it. Don't panic if you see mill. You just need to kind of roll your shoulders back, kick back, and relax, and just say, look, I know your deck doesn't have points and has a very straightforward strategy that depends on winning round one, I'm going to win round one. I'm not going to get too attached to my cards. And then I'm going to crush you in a long round three or round two and enjoy my free win. Shout out to McRandar and Ahmed Ali for all their unbelievably generous support on Patreon.